What's up YouTube? In this tutorial, we'll learn some of the best ways to use easings in Webflow. So let's get started. This is what our animation looks like with no easing. The car starts instantly and stops abruptly. In real life, objects have to pick up momentum before they reach full speed, and that's what makes movement feel natural. To ease the start of our animation, we can select an in ease. And with that applied, you'll notice the car picks up speed and then it stops abruptly but we want it to start slowing down towards the end as well. So we'll select an in out ease. And with this applied, you'll notice the start of the animation eases in and the end of the animation eases out. Now, when an element is coming into view, we only need to use an ease out because we're only seeing the end of the animation. We never see the start. So we just wanna slow down the animation as it reaches the end. If an element is leaving view, we only need to ease the start of the animation because we never see where it ends. So for elements that are leaving view, we would use an in ease like this. So this is how you can read an easing graph in Webflow. The bottom here represents our total animation duration. It's playing from zero to 1.8 seconds at a steady pace. Now the left here represents the progress of our animation. So if we're animating an element from zero to hundred pixels, you'll notice it's starting off slow, speeding up in the middle and slowing down at the end based on the easing we chose. So basically whenever our graph is sort of flat, like right here, we're noticing very little change in our animation over a longer period of time. Whenever the line becomes more steep, we're noticing a more dramatic change over a shorter time, so our animation appears faster here. And the steeper your line, the faster the animation will appear. Here at the end, the line flattens out again, and it's a less dramatic change over a longer period of time. So that's how you can read the easing. Easing can also affect the value our elements animate too. Here we're using an outback ease, so it's gonna animate past the 100 pixels we've defined. So you'll notice our element moves past that 100 pixels before returning back to the 100 pixels at the end. Lastly, let's put this into practice by creating a custom easing for our page load interaction. So here we have this interaction that's essentially counting up and our users are gonna see where the animation starts and where it ends. So we'll need to ease both values. And you'll notice here it starts off slow, speeds up in the middle and ends even slower. So if we look at that order, slow, fast, extra slow at the end. Now, if we were to preview this right now, everything's set to linear. This doesn't look anywhere near as luxurious as it did on the live site, but we can try and get this in the right place by selecting all our points and do an ease of in and out. So we're easing the start and the end of our animation. So that looks a little better already, but they have equal ease on both the start and the end. We could do something a little more custom though by selecting a custom easing. And here, if we use the starting point of this in out uh, court, you'll notice equal easing on both start and end, but we could increase sort of the duration of this ending easing and decrease the duration of the starting easing a little bit. And we'll have this really sharp point in the middle where it's kind of fast. So now we could copy this easing value and apply that same value as a custom value. Um, so we'll just switch this one to custom here, plug that in and do the same for this one as well, switch it to custom. And now if we were to preview this, we should notice something a lot similar to what's on our live site where it really slows down at the end and this just feels really nice and custom. So that's a high level overview of how to use easings in Webflow. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I'll catch you in the next one.